The Nile River, flowing from the dense tropical jungles of Central Africa, drains one-tenth of the African continent. The Nile, as it flows through the level treeless plains of Sudan to the hot, dry desert of Egypt, is one of the most important rivers in the history of civilization. Because the Nile flows from south to north, the lower river, near its mouth, is at the top of the map. This area through which the lower part of the river flows is known as the Nile Valley. The main Nile River is formed at Khartoum by the junction of the White Nile and the Blue Nile. The colors of the water of the White and Blue Nile are caused by the type of land through which each river flows. On the White Nile, near Khartoum, the Jebel Aulia Dam is located. Farther upstream from Khartoum, on the Blue Nile, Senar Dam has been built. These two great dams at the head of the Nile Valley, this one located at Jebel Aulia, and this one called Senar Dam, have been built to store water for irrigation. In this dry land, almost all life depends on the Nile's water. The dam's great storage reservoir supplies water for the irrigation projects on the level plains of Sudan. This is the main canal leading from the Senar Dam reservoir. Because the river waters bring silt and deposit it in the canal, dredges continually operate to widen and deepen the canal. Much of the Nile water is used to irrigate level fields like this cotton field in central Sudan. These young cotton plants, which are being cultivated, could not grow without water from the Nile. Another important crop in the irrigated Sudan plain is dura, a staple grain like wheat or corn. These men are pulling weeds from an irrigated field of dura. The people of this arid plain live in simple circular houses like these, made of mud, straw, and reeds taken from the banks of the Nile. Usually these people wear white clothing because it reflects the heat of the sun. On another side of the village, irrigated grass-covered plains provide pasture for many herds of cattle and other livestock. Great trading centers are located at Khartoum, Khartoum North, and Amdurman. From time to time, the products of irrigated fields, such as cattle, dura, wheat, and cotton, are brought to market. People from the surrounding countryside bring their livestock or other farm produce to these trading centers. People travel to these markets much as their forefathers did on foot, or on donkeys, or in the ancient boats called felucas, which traveled the Nile. Europeans also traded Khartoum, but usually travel in these modern Nile River steamers. Or a few may arrive in fast seaplanes, for Khartoum is an important air transportation center. But whether they come by camelback or train, by donkey or plane, they conduct their trade in such places as the livestock market at Amdurman, where meat and hides are traded. Here is another market where foods, clothing, and other articles are sold by local merchants. This merchant has many foods to sell, nuts, dates, dura, and wheat. The man is sifting wheat to make it ready for sale. Here is a place in the market where shoppers may rest and get a drink of water. This woman lives in the older part of Khartoum, where the houses are built of mud or adobe. In the more modern residential section, dwellings look like these. Near Khartoum, people laboriously draw drinking water from wells dug deep in the earth. 
or scoop it directly from the same canals that irrigate their fields. But in Khartoum, modern electric pumps lift the Nile water to large settling tanks where the impurities are removed. From there, the water is pumped to large storage tanks. Few American cities have purer water than Khartoum. Only a few miles downstream from Khartoum is located the sixth cataract or rapids of the Nile. Here the Nile flows through a narrow gorge and drops rapidly over huge rocks. At this point, the Nile leaves behind the semi-arid plains of Sudan and enters the hot, dry desert, flowing either through flat desert land or through narrow, well-defined valleys, between rocky hills or cliffs where little or no rain falls. In the lower Nile Valley, another great irrigation dam has been built at the first cataract of the Nile, about midway between Khartoum and the Mediterranean Sea. Even a dam as long and as high as this cannot hold all of the water which pours down the Nile at flood stage. During the flood, the gates at Aswan are opened wide. The flooding Nile covers millions of acres of farmland with its muddy waters. When the flood recedes, it leaves behind deposits of new soil to enrich the land. This farmer is examining the fresh layer of fertile silt which the flooding Nile has deposited on his land. When the flood crest has passed, the gates of Aswan Dam are closed and its reservoir starts to fill. Several historic Egyptian temples built centuries before the dam itself stand in the path of the waters of the reservoir. Today, when the reservoir behind Aswan Dam is filled with water for irrigation, these historic ruins are almost completely submerged. These pictures were taken during the season when all the Nile water is allowed to pass through the dam. For about six months of the year, one may visit these temples only in a boat. From Aswan Dam, water is pumped to dry but fertile farmlands like this which lie above the flood level of the river. To lift water from irrigation canals to even higher farmland, these Egyptian farmers use an ancient machine called a shadab. Notice how easily the water bucket is raised. This is because a counterweight of mud and burlap has been attached to the far end of the pole to help do the lifting. Another ancient machine for lifting water is called a sagia, or water wheel. Power to turn the wooden gears is supplied by a bull or a water buffalo. Pottery jugs attached to the water wheel by rope dip into the Nile water, scooping up the water as the wheel turns. When the jugs reach the top of the wheel, the water pours into a wooden trough. The water lifted by the Sagia now flows to the fields through mud-walled ditches like these. Today, modern machinery is replacing these primitive methods of lifting water. During the heat of the day, the water buffalo is often turned loose from its labor in the fields to rest and cool itself in the Nile. Children of the Nile Valley welcome the chance to play in the water with these gentle animals. Unless these animals spend a part of each day in the water, their skin may crack open from the dry heat of the sun. In the river and in nearby canals, fishermen cast their nets to trap the many varieties of fish which live in the waters of the Nile. Boats traveling along the Nile must pass through navigation locks in Aswan Dam. The locks at Aswan are opened once a week for the passage of river boats. 
The cargo barge on the left is waiting its turn to pass through the giant Aswan locks. Many products are carried up and down the Nile. The difference in water level above and below the dam is often over 100 feet. For this reason, five sets of locks must be used to raise or lower ships. Further downstream and toward its mouth lies the city of Luxor. This Egyptian fisherman and his son are approaching the city. Here, the modern city of Luxor has been built near the ruins of Thebes, ancient capital of Egypt. This is the temple of Luxor, one of the most magnificent ruins in Egypt. These stately columns built over 3,000 years ago are known as papyrus columns because their tops resemble the bud of the papyrus plant. Other impressive ruins are located at nearby Karnak. This is the temple of Karnak with its rows of ram sphinxes. These huge stone figures have the heads of rams and the bodies of lions. The ancient rulers of Egypt built giant stone images of themselves. This stone face is among the best preserved stone sculpture at Karnak. Most famous of all the monuments of man are the Great Pyramids, located on the Nile banks near Cairo. Here the pyramids are seen from a grove of date palms along the Nile. These Egyptian boys are bringing their animals, two water buffalo, a donkey, and a goat to the Nile to drink and cool off. Near one of the great pyramids is the world famous Sphinx, which is believed to resemble the king who had it built. The Sphinx is probably the oldest statue in the world. The Sphinx is believed to be about 5,000 years old. Several times, the Sphinx has nearly been buried in sand. There are many pyramids in Egypt along the Nile, but these near Cairo are the largest and most famous. The two largest pyramids are about 450 feet high. This Egyptian guide is pointing out the cracks between the huge stone blocks of the pyramids. Near these ancient monuments lies the modern city of Cairo, a busy city of nearly one and one half million people. Cairo has many beautiful new buildings, hotels, stores, theaters, and offices. This is one of Cairo's power plants for generating electricity used in lighting and factory operation. Here is one of Cairo's busiest factories, the largest glass factory in Egypt. In Cairo, there are many mosques where the people worship. This one is the Muhammad Ali Mosque. The tall, slender towers of the mosque are called minarets and are used to call the people to prayer. Many of the people of Egypt are Mohammedans. Five times a day, wherever he may happen to be, every Mohammedan must bow down and recite a prayer. As nearly as possible, the Mohammedan faces toward the city of Mecca, where Mohammed was born. Near Cairo, the Nile divides into two main branches, the Rosetta and the Damietta, and flows to the sea through a region called the Delta of the Nile. In the Nile Delta, there are many large canals used both for irrigation and transportation. The Nile canals are always crowded with river craft of all kinds. These canals serve as a great cargo transport network. The cargo boats are called feluccas. The Nile River finally meets the Mediterranean at Rosetta near Alexandria through the Rosetta branch and at Damietta near Port Said on the Damietta branch. Port Said is a busy harbor because of its location at the Mediterranean end of the Suez Canal. 
Here the Nile fans through its great delta to meet the Mediterranean Sea. Great international ocean liners lie waiting to take aboard the products which the life-giving Nile has produced and carried down hundreds of miles to the Sudan and Egypt. Products of fields irrigated with water from the Nile. Foodstuffs grown in the new soil each year deposited by the flooding Nile. Goods manufactured in new factories bordering the Nile. Truly it can be said that all of the valley of Egypt is the gift of the Nile.